Mark, I'm Chris Hayes. For four years, American foreign policy revolved chiefly around what was most personally, politically, and financially beneficial to Donald Trump and his family. It was a level of institutionalized corruption we'd never quite seen. A damning new report reveals just how much Jared Kushner benefited from his role in the White House, and specifically with his meetings with the corrupt Saudi Arabia government. And there is shocking new reporting from the New York Times that reveals what the price for it all was. Quote, six months after leaving the White House, Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, secured a $2 billion investment from a fund led by the Saudi Crown Prince, a close ally during the Trump administration. Jared Kushner, the prince of nepotism, benefited from meeting with and developing a relationship with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS for short. Soon after leaving the White House, the Saudi government's investment fund poured a ton of money into Jared Kushner's new investment firm. If it looks suspicious, that's because it is. But what makes this more interesting is that advisors to the Saudi investment firm specifically warned MBS against putting his money there. In fact, on January 6th, Kushner was on his way home from another trip to Saudi Arabia. Just think about that for a second. Another plausible explanation, Jared Kushner was using the connections he fostered as an emissary for the American government in the Middle East, uh, which he only got because of who he married, for his own personal financial connections in, you know, the future two weeks later. Lo and behold, it worked. Because we're now learning that six months after that visit, the Saudis invested two billion with a B dollars in Kushner's new private equity firm. Man, what an entrepreneur. Here's what they had to say about Jared Kushner's firm. They examined it and found it unsatisfactory in all aspects. They cited the inexperience of management. They warned the Saudis could be on the hook for the bulk of the investment risk. They thought the asset management fee seemed excessive. And they found public relations risks from being associated with Jared Kushner because he's the son-in-law of the former president, Donald Trump. Which is hilarious because there are few regimes in the world more ruthless and barbaric than the Saudis. A report by the State Department on the human rights violations committed by the Saudis include unlawful killings, executions for nonviolent offenses, forced disappearances, torture in cases of cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment of prisoners and detainees by government agents, harsh and life-threatening prison conditions, arbitrary arrest and detention, and so much more. This isn't even the half of it. And it's worth noting that the Saudis have led a coalition war on Yemen, which is now in its eighth year. This has created the worst human rights crisis in the world, and as a result, millions of people are on the brink of starvation. In fact, a panel that screens investments for the main Saudi sovereign wealth fund cited many concerns about the proposed deal. They found the fledgling firm's operations to be, and I'm quoting here, unsatisfactory in all aspects. Is that bad? But MBS, who controls the fund as the de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia, greenlit the investment anyway. He overruled his financial advisors and hooked Kushner up with $2 billion. That is colossal, but it's really a drop in the bucket for the Saudis. Their investment fund is worth $620 billion. And for comparison, the investment that Kushner got, $2 billion, is twice as much as Steve Mnuchin got from the Saudis, which was $1 billion. And look, you can hate the guy, there's plenty of reasons to hate him, but he does actually have experience in this field. And he got half as much as Kushner got, who doesn't know what he's doing. Kushner's experience, aside from working in his father-in-law's White House, is working at his dad's real estate company. The company where he overpaid for a Manhattan skyscraper, found it to be riddled with debt, and then struggled to find a buyer when then, oh wow, suddenly he finds a buyer from the Qatari government just as he was negotiating international deals with the Qatari government. Isn't that a nice story of friendship? Things you do for your bros? Essentially, the Trump administration sold U.S. foreign policy, Jamal Khashoggi's life, and American stated principles on liberal democracy and freedom of the press for, what, two billion bucks that went straight into Jared Kushner's pocket. What timing? So obviously, ethics groups have a huge issue with this. It really looks like Kushner got rewarded for being cozy with the Saudis while in the White House. And it highlights yet another example of how 
Jared Kushner, just like the rest of the Trump administration, used their roles, their access, their positions for personal profit and gain. And specifically with the Saudis, you all remember how lenient the Trump administration was on the Saudi government. Saudi Arabia was the first foreign destination for Trump, and that is not normal. They turned a blind eye to the killing of Jamal Khashoggi and didn't do anything regarding the litany of other human rights abuses committed by the Saudi government. And again, their exceptionally cozy relationship with the Saudis fueled the war on Yemen. Trump and Kushner exploiting their relationship with the Saudis for personal gain is obviously corrupt, but these types of things happen far too often in our government. And when there's no real system of checks and balances, it only guarantees that we're going to see more of this.